Hey, welcome to Spectrum DIY. It's Dave. I wanted to discuss a brand new project. I've been discussing it with some friends and my Discord people and one or two YouTubers. I, I haven't really I've been hesitant to share this because a lot of my recent projects just uh didn't didn't seem as interesting to people as I thought they would. So I was like, well, that's fine. It's not gonna stop me. So I, I've made something and I didn't record anything. You're, this is the first time it's on camera outside of like a little picture or a little snippet. So I'm gonna flip my camera around and because I can't flip my camera, it's gonna be like some cuts in here and there and I'm just gonna give you the run around update and then we're gonna get down into a teardown. So stay tuned for that. As I said, we're gonna we'll flip it around. I have made, this is gonna be called the Spooky Synth Box. The Spooky Synth Box, that's what I'm gonna call it for right now. And I've got a 25 grid, as you can see one of these buttons is missing. And I gotta get that fixed. <clears throat> I'm waiting on a, a new shipment of parts and stuff. and. So the way this is gonna be laid out, this button will correspond to this knob, which will then correspond to a switch, which I have not yet done that. I I got this far and it's, it's relatively big. Uh, across the top here, I'm gonna put, uh, this will be my VCOs. All of my VCOs will go across the top I do have an output plate on the back, so I've got a place to mount all my output jacks. And let's show you kind of at an angle. <laughs> like I said, I've got I've been doing a lot. And so I haven't covered the video. And <clears throat> so here in a second, I'm gonna cut to my overhead camera and we're gonna do a teardown of one of these arcade buttons because uh, they, there's nothing to these potentiometers, but these arcade buttons I found really fascinating. And since one of them was missing the threaded nut, I figured why not? We'll just tear one of them down. So bear with me. We're going to switch over to the other video and we'll cover that. So one moment. Discuss how this is set up. We'll take one of these. We'll take this button. And also we need a switch. So I found this was so neat and I thought I would cover this because, let me bring it down just a little bit. Now, what makes this so neat is how it's put together. Now, I am of course missing the nut that goes on. Now, we'll just jump straight into how these mount. First you drill a hole, obviously. that. <laughs> It fits the size of this piece here. Let me bring it in focus. I do. I'm gonna be extra careful about my focus today. Um, so this switch fits down in. There's two. There's two collarbones. You can't see it. I apologize. I'm gonna. If you're hearing me say this, then I left this part in. But I'm gonna start just edit all this crap out. I'm struggling with my words today, and my hands are shaking and no I have not had a lot of coffee to Vero I know you're gonna say something about coffee <laughs> but uh, anyway so let's do the tear down what it the way this goes you drill a hole that fits this second ring here and this can set down into that hole this then goes upside down and acts as a washer and then the threaded nut screws onto the bottom and that clamps it in place. Next, it's an LED and you don't have to use the LED but we're gonna use the LED in this synth box that I'm making so since this is a white you grab the white LED and the, there's an anode on this side and cathode on this side it is not marked on this base at all however I have noticed that with this one the anode is thinner than the cathode, so that being the case, it slides in this socket like a normal, say, headlight or something like that would. So you push this down into its socket, all right? And then this piece slides down 
into the button and twist locks in place like that then this is your switch now it has two modes you have if you flip it this way uh, is it this way there we go I can barely see that the camera probably picks it up better you put your common neutral here and you can either have it the LED always on and it turns off when you down press or you can have it off and it's only on when you down press and the way this fits in is pretty simple it, it fits right in here on these holes a little hole there a hole on this side you do kind of have to man manhandle it a little bit to get it down and is it gonna go there it went there we go all right so if we wanted to test this we would bring our power supply would then come in let's say we want it off until pressed and we put our neutral ground here and then we let me double check that untwist and you can check the anode is on this side so this is our positive side so we'll remember that slide that back on so actually we can give it juice here and ground here and then we'll go from off it's always off until pressed to the common ground on the bottom reach over turn our power supply nine volts now when you press the button oh I might do apologize I wired that incorrectly they look the same they're both red <laughs> there we go see <clears throat> so it starts off this is in the always on on the top and you press it turns it off <laughs> right and then if you put it down here it's always off until you press it and it turns on now that being the case the way I want this to work I want the oscillator since the oscillator in the circuit has an LED to ground what I want to do is to take the ground and run it through the LED deep button depressor so that basically the LED will oscillate at the same frequency that the oscillator is oscillating. Now the next thing I wanted to cover a teardown of this uh, this piece. These are transparent tops with a white background or in the case of a blue one which I don't have in my on my hand it was on the board you can tear them open and all of them you press these in and push push them down it's kind of hard to do myself I'm sure somebody there we go somebody else might have a little easier time so you push that down you pull it out real gentle and we can set that down and take the spring out and this piece you just pop that off like this and inside there's a little white diffuse and a clear lens and in this lens you could take something let's say you printed off a button or something which I'll tell you what let me do a little smiley <clears throat> alright so I printed off a quick little DIY we're just gonna cut this it didn't print totally transparent I don't know why but that's fine we just ring cut this out doesn't have to be absolutely perfect we're just trying to test it out it literally you can see that on the sheet it printed like a dark section on it oh, wow I gotta make that even smaller that's right. cut that out a little DIY symbol and we pop this one out 
just by popping this cap off. Pop the diffuser out, pop that one out, pop this new one in. Oh, it needs a little trim. Pop that down in there like so. Let's pop that down in there like so. Pop that down in there like so. Pop the spring in there like so. Like so. Like so. Like so. And then this piece goes down in the center like so. Pops in. Now you have a little DIY button. And the labels can be whichever and however you want them to be. You could stick them straight on here if you want to. But the bottom line is. I really like these buttons and I really just wanted to share it with you like oh my god isn't that cool so you can just break that apart and you can replace that with whatever you want so and of course it comes in I've, I've got four colors and a whole bag of switches and sockets so we shall see how that goes but anyway that's all I've got for you I really can't wait till I've got I've got some CEM 3340 uh, voltage controlled oscillator chips on the way I've got oh I've got quite a bit of synthesizer type circuitry on the way and these things here are going to be the heart of the button pressy goodness but they're not going to have labels they're just going to be uh, plain buttons. Oops, did I forget the spring? I did. It's sitting right in front of me and I forgot it. Put that back in there. Get back in that hole. Ah, press. Anyway, so I will stop holding you. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Appreciate you hitting that like and subscribe. Hope you like what you saw here today. And I really look forward to finishing this project and getting you know, it's cost, it's had to be a little stop and go because I can't afford it all at one time, but that's all right. I have a Patreon now, finally, or let me rephrase that. My Patreon has a patron, finally, and so I'm highly grateful for them, and because of that, I have been able to, you know, buy a couple of things, like for this project here for the kids they really enjoyed being able to play on a keyboard and they were asking all kinds of questions about the different components so being able to get them into electronics and show kids that it's nothing scary it's really fun it can be super easy you know that's just I love that so much but I really appreciate you guys I really do so you guys have a good one and I will see you next time